Hi. In this video, I'll tell you about Open Garage. It's an open source universal garage door opener built using the ESP8266 Wi Fi chip and the Blink app. This is my prototype version with the 3D printed case. And this is the final version using an off the shelf enclosure with custom cutouts. Using Open Garage, I can check my garage door status at anywhere when I travel. Get notifications if I accidentally left my garage door open. Close it if I need. Or remotely open it for a friend who needs to get into the house. Using the mobile app, I can check the history graph to see a list of recent status changes and even find out if my car is parked under the garage or not. I had planned to work on this project for a while as there have been multiple occasions where I forgot to close my garage door when I left the house in a hurry or locked myself out of the house and there were occasions where I needed to let a friend or handyman in when I was not at home. Recently, as I started learning about ESP8266, I found it to be the perfect platform to help me complete this project. To show you how this works, let me take it apart. So here is the circuit board. It has an ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip, an ultrasonic distance sensor, a relay for triggering garage door actions, a push button, and an indicator LED. You typically mount it to the ceiling at the garage with the distance sensor facing down to the floor or the top of the car if your car is parked underneath it. When the garage door opens and comes up, the sensor reads the distance to the door, which is a much shorter distance. Therefore, by checking the distance value, it can tell if the door is open or closed. Another way is to mount it at the side of the garage door facing the outside. This way the logic is reversed. If the distance reading is small, that means the door is closed. And if the distance reading is high, that means the door is open. To interface with your existing garage door system, the controller uses a relay to simulate button clicks. For most of the garage door systems, you can simply insert these two wires from the terminal block into the same spots where your door button wires would normally go. Alternatively, you can take apart an existing garage door remote, solder two wires to its button, and then connect these two wires to open garage through the terminal block. This way, the relay click simulates pressing the button on the remote, therefore triggering garage door actions. So as long as you have a garage door remote which works with your garage door system, you can always use this approach to interface it with Open Garage. Now let me show you the software setup steps and the web interface. The controller supports both a built-in web interface with embedded HTMLs and also remote access through the Blink app. Before proceeding, it's best that you install the Blink app, create an account, log in, and scan the Open Garage app QR code to create the project inside the Blink app. Then go to the project settings and copy the authorization token. If you don't want to use Blink at this point, you can skip this step and come back to do this later. Open Garage is powered by a micro USB cable. At the first boot up, it starts in access point mode and creates an open Wi Fi network named OG followed by the last six digits of its MAC address. In this mode, the LED blinks quickly at about twice a second. Use your phone or computer to connect to this open Wi-Fi network, then open a browser, 
and type in the IP address 192.168.4.1. This will show a list of nearby Wi-Fi networks it has detected. Select one of them or manually type in the SSID if you're connecting to a hidden network. Then type in the Wi-Fi password and paste the Blink authorization token if you have one. If you don't, just leave the token empty and you can always come back to configure this later. Now click on Submit and wait for about 20 to 30 seconds for the controller to connect to your router. It will then report back the IP address it's assigned to and a button to redirect to this address. So here is the IP assigned to the Open Garage device. At this point, the controller is going to reboot into station mode and the LED will blink much slower. You should then switch your phone or computer back to your home network and then click on the redirect button to go to the home page of the device. You can also directly type in the IP address in a browser to access the home page. Here you can check the distance sensor readings. For example, if I put a blocker in front of the sensor, it would detect the distance value changes and report the status change. You can also trigger a button action or reboot the controller. The button click and reboot are both protected by a device key and by default the device key is open door. Next go to the options page. Here you can change a number of settings including accessibility, blink token, mounting type, etc. You can also change the device key if you want. The option you likely have to change is the distance threshold. The controller uses this threshold to tell if the door is open or closed. To determine the threshold, you should estimate the distance from the sensor to the garage door when it's fully open. Let's call this D1. And the distance from the sensor to your car when it's parked underneath the sensor, let's call this D2. Then set the threshold to be larger than D1 but smaller than D2. Going back to the home page, click on the log button and you will see a table listing the most recent events. Also, you can update the firmware through the web interface. And this makes use of the over-the-air update feature of ESP8266. If you want to reset the controller back to factory default settings, you can press and hold this button for more than 5 seconds until the LED stays on. Then release the button. At this point, the controller will erase all the settings and recover to the initial setting where it uh, starts in AP mode. Now let me show you the Blink app. It's a cloud-based app, so it allows me to remotely monitor and control Open Garage. If you have set the Blink token by now, your Blink app should be communicating with Open Garage already and reporting its status. Like the built-in web interface, the app shows the distance sensor readings the door status, and a button to trigger actions. Additionally, it has a history graph that visualizes past events. For example, the red curve indicates the door status, so the regions where it's high indicates when the door was open. The orange curve shows the distance readings. You can see that when the door is open, the distance values goes down correspondingly. 
I can also tell from the distance curve when my car was parked in the garage versus when the garage was empty, which was indicated by the highest value. And finally, the Blink app supports push notifications. So every time the door opens or closes, I will receive a notification about the event. That's all about Open Garage. To find out additional details, please visit opengarage.io and also github.com slash opengarage, where you can find hardware design files including schematic, board, part list, and 3D model of the enclosure, as well as the Open Garage Arduino library and instructions to compile the firmware. Thanks for watching this video.